Hi everyone, we are back with Forever Football Show at foreverfootballshow.com. We broadcast live every Sunday, 5 p.m. Pacific Time, Seattle Time, from the Georgia Dragon, the best soccer club in Seattle. Today we have Aaron Lane, Filippo Milani, and myself, Alberto Sutton. We are talking about soccer from all over the world, already sprinkling a little bit of information from the World Cup. Stay tuned, May 30 and June 6, we'll break it down. We'll talk everything about the World Cup. Let's move on to Spain, where we had the last round of the, the Spanish Cup, the Spanish League. No surprises there, right? No, pretty, Easy as it pretty straightforward, yeah. So tell us a little bit about how did we get into this, the, 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 the round? Barcelona one point ahead, what were the games and how did it turn out? Well, we had uh, Barcelona facing off um, against one of the lower teams, I believe it was uh, Real Madrid. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Real Madrid facing Almeria. Malaga. Uh, Malaga, excuse me, that was Sevilla's game. Uh, but yeah, so so Barcelona thumped <laughs> their opposition 4-0. Uh, Messi tying Ronaldo's uh, 47 goal goals. Uh, 47 goals as well as 34 in the in the league. Yep. Uh, so phenomenal by him, especially for, at least in my opinion, not, not necessarily being an out-and-out -out striker such as uh, Ronaldo, you know. Uh, so huge, huge accomplishment for him. And uh, Real underperforming once again, getting into early trouble, giving up a goal, and not being able to come back, uh, tying 1-1 in the end, and not even really challenging, you know. So. Filippo, do you think that this result today kind of sealed the destiny of Pellegrini as the ex-coach of Real Madrid? Yeah. Can I say that already? Yeah, I think so. And I can tell you something more about uh, what happened today in, uh, in Siena. After the intermatch, uh, Mourinho, I don't know if it, he was real or not, but he started crying. And then in the conference he said, uh, you know, that is not my home. I'm, I'm seriously thinking to go away. I think behind these words there is Real Madrid. He's a, I think he already has a contract. And he even mentioned in another interview that uh, he didn't say that this season, but he said one day I will train Real Madrid. And it's probably next year. Well, next few months. Potentially, yes. Uh, it would be great to see if he can replicate his talents and you know results in other leagues now in the Spanish uh, league as well. Um, we had, uh, let's take a look at the table just to see how things ended at yeah. the Spanish League. Uh, Barcelona locking things in, uh, Real Madrid second. On, on uh, 99 points as well, which is a, a record. new Spanish League record, yeah. It, and it's not that Real Madrid did bad, you know, they yeah, no, scored a lot of uh, points. Definitely not, I mean, you know, pacing Barcelona for the record in the, in the league yeah. on points, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Any, any other year they would have won it. You know, and uh, I mean, Barcelona, a lot of people were uh, ragging on him a little bit, not, not performing as well as last season, but hey, a record in the league for for most ever points, you know, that's Absolutely. nothing to be ashamed of. I think of. that's again, brings, brings up what we were saying last week about Liga. Liga is, you know, you have Real Madrid and you have Barcelona, but then yeah. 25 points between, maybe 28 points between uh, Barcelona and Valencia in third place. It's really too much. Too much. Yeah, yeah especially when I watch uh, the Brazilian tournament that you have, like, you know, throughout the season, 10 different teams in the lead. Uh, last year, four or five teams could have been the champion in the last round. And uh, it says a lot about the kind of the caliber of the leagues and the kind of players that they produce later on as well, right? Uh, we, we just saw that, that uh, Sevilla, but Valencia and Sevilla, Clinch the other spots in the Champions League. Yeah. Uh, strong teams. Sevilla, could, they were a little bit uh, disappointed this year in the European Cup, but yeah. they can come back stronger next year. Yeah, though, uh, speaking of Sevilla, um, I would definitely encourage uh, everyone on watching the, uh, the highlights from the Sevilla Almeria game. Some phenomenal goals in there. Um, by, uh, Did Luis Fabiano score any? Um, you know, I, I can't recall, but. Uh, there, had there to keep, some, I had to keep an eye on that guy to see if yeah. Brazil can <laughs> leverage those goals. Um, but this is not the only thing that happened in, in Spain this week. We have to highlight also the result of the Euro Europe Cup, where Atletico Madrid built Fulham 2-1. to one. And Atletico Madrid came end up the season with a double as well. Because this week, on May 19th, 
they play the final of the Copa del Rey against Sevilla. I think, in my opinion, Sevilla is the favorite, but Atletico Madrid comes with the credential of being the Europe Cup champions. What do you have your money on? Um, I have to say Sevilla. Uh, I'm a big, big Sevilla uh, fan in Spain. Um, kind of like rooting for the underdog. So, I mean, not necessarily the underdog compared to uh, Atletico, but uh, definitely in terms of the league. Yeah, but the fact that they played uh, already one final, yeah. maybe can help uh, Atletico Madrid to be with the head, the head in the match. Maybe they can make it. I, I would support uh, Atletico Madrid. Uh, so let's talk then a little bit about the Spain roster. Yeah. That one, I didn't hear much of complaints that players that recently, they've been playing together for the longest time, the current European champions, suffered an accident and for some reason didn't do better in the Confederation Cup, which I think it's good for Spain, because they got the wake up call then instead of now. The US as well. <laughs> they got the wake up, the, Spain, the Spaniards got the wake up call then and not now. But the, the, in my opinion, the best roster Definitely. when you combine individual talent, discipline, and ability to play and execute, I, yeah. I, I'm team, team my favorites. dynamics are fantastic. I just downloaded here. Uh, go ahead. No, no, it's, you know, I, I agree with you. They are my favorites too. And uh, what is really important for Spain is because they made uh, the European Championship two years ago, uh, now they are ready for a for, for a huge competition. In the past, they always, uh, they didn't make because they were not ready. This year, they are ready. In, in more than that, they have the depth in the bench. And a depth that changes not only the quality of the players, but can change the way of playing. Definitely. A lot of people in Brazil are doubting Dunga's roster because he could only change six for half a dozen if he wants. But there's not gonna be, he claims that he can change the, 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 the mechanism and the tactics on the fly, like he did playing against the U.S. in the final of the Confederation Cup. But people are believing that Brazil is a little bit too steady, too uh, fixed in the way of playing. And Spain can play in multiple ways. They will be able to find wins in different ways. They have incredible players. I, I can see that sometimes they play with a 4-2-3-1, uh, with Villa or Torres uh, in front, Fabregas or Xavi. They can choose between Iniesta and Navas, between uh, Xavi or uh, Marco Sena, they have all these variations. Midfield that is just amazing. It's, and they it's can play 4-1-4-1 as well. They, they've been playing in all different formations and they can swap players and they have many uh, versatile players that can play the same way as, as Aaron can, can, can do everything here in the show. <laughs> The Spanish players can do everything on the field. It's going to be a beautiful yeah. team to watch. Yeah, I, I feel like Fabregas is key as well. Um, I know in the past he's been kind of that that impact player, that super sub. You know, it'll be interesting to see whether he he starts for them this tournament or if he's used in that role again to to kind of change the dynamics of the game. So I don't know what team in the. As uh, Sabi Alonso, Fabregas, uh, Iniesta uh, to boot in the field, so it's yeah. it's unbelievable. It's and you know you win the tournament with the midfielders. Yeah. And if, if from what we hear, they are in that mode of understanding the value that they bring to the team, and they're obviously there are egos, but they know their places in the team. And you know we don't hear the same kind of controversy that we hear in other teams like Argentina, with players complaining why they're starting or not. We don't hear that in Spain, which is a good sign. Yeah, absolutely. Their risk is the risk as every year. Chicken and out in the middle, right? Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. But the fact that they won the league, now they have more confidence in themselves. So I guess uh, can be the year for Spain. It's going to be hard to choose the starting starting 11 in that team it's, as well. It's a, it's a tough problem to have, though. And, and as you uh, pointed out, I think, I think as far as the midfield, it's probably going to be the most difficult. And, uh, it's good. I think the players are understanding each other. I think they they respect each other. I think uh, you know they're all different midfield players. You know, uh, yeah, and players who have been very important for for their in respective the clubs in, in decision you know. decision making times, right? Sabi, Iniesta, uh, Fabregas. Fabregas. They they can all they can all make results on their own. It's going to be a hard team to beat. Yeah, absolutely. And they are not in an easy group, though. Yeah. Because they have Chile in, uh, just ahead of them. 
Chile, Chile just lost against uh, Mexico, by the way, in a friendly game. But uh, it's going to be an interesting, an interesting, uh, an interesting team to watch. Uh, with that, we close our Spanish league, and we're just going to go for a preview uh, right after the, the break, a preview of the final of the Champions League. Stay with us. We'll be back in 30 seconds.